guys welcome back to my channel I'm starting today's day in the life video in the car because the girls had an activity this morning so it is 9 40 and I just dropped them off I'm just gonna wait here because it's only for an hour so I'm just gonna sit out in the parking lot but I thought I'd say hey to you guys and introduce this video and kind of what we're gonna be up to today have a couple things it is a homeschool day so a lot of that stuff was normal I'm gonna show you kind of my new planning and I don't want to say planning because you guys know that I don't do like specialized like specific lesson planning but I'm going to show you kind of what I've been doing with my youngest for her daily to-do list of all of her work. Uh, I kind of tweaked it a little bit. I didn't start this at the beginning of the school year because if you remember our school year started out pretty bumpy with the kitchen renovation we were in the middle of so we weren't doing a full day and stuff like that. So since things are back to normal now and have been for about a month I've been able to really figure out like a planning system for her, um, trying to keep her organized, trying to keep me organized. And so I've come on some, I've come upon something that is not earth shattering by any means, but it's been working out really well for us. So I'm going to show you that. We also have two new additions to the family in the pet world that I'm going to share with you guys. A very low maintenance pet. You guys already may know we have a parakeet, a dog, and a guinea pig. But the girls have been wanting something in particular, a little bit unique for quite a while. And normally if it was just a regular pet, I would be against it because I really don't want anything else to have to take care of. But like I said, these little pets are very low maintenance. They're very unique. And I think you guys are going to want to see them. So I'm going to show you guys that. Um, also show you some of our favorite fall books that I read with my youngest that my oldest loved growing up. And now my youngest still loves. Even though she's 10, she still loves these books. So I'm going to show those to you guys in case you need some new fall books to add to your collection for fall and or Thanksgiving. We are also getting ready to start, because I'm a glutton for punishment, redoing two bathrooms. Now it's not gonna be a serious renovation like it was in the kitchen, um, but we are redoing the girls' bathroom, replacing their countertop, and then just redecorating. And then I'm also gonna be doing the half bathroom. That'll be a really easy job, except for I can't figure out a paint color that I want. But the girls' bathroom is already kind of a little bit farther along in the process. We are actually removing the countertop today hopefully installing the new countertop today so i'll show you a little bit of that um, and that'll be also a separate video when it's all done i'm going to do a before and after for the bathroom like i did for the kitchen that is something we're getting into today my husband is actually at home right now taking off the old countertop hopefully the walls don't get too damaged um, and then we're going to put the new one on today if all goes as planned. So anyway, long intro just to say hey to you guys and let you know kind of what's going on in today's video. If you like Day in the Life videos, make sure you give this one a thumbs up and I will see you guys here in a little bit. So I want to show you guys some books that we like to read in the fall. Some of them leading up to Halloween. Most of them you could do just any time leading up to Thanksgiving. Uh, so the first one is the Berenstain Bears Living Lights. The Living Lights series are ones that are religious. And then the regular ones are the ones that don't mention God or anything in, in the books. But I like both of the different types. I grew up reading Berenstain Bears, and so they're still my favorite. And I still like to read these to my youngest. So another good one. So a good one to get is the Berenstain Bears Give Thanks. Obviously, it's about Thanksgiving. There's a little pilgrim skit involved. And it's just a really fun one to kind of get you excited leading up to Thanksgiving. This is like a Target exclusive. There's two books in this one. I don't really love the trick or treat one, but I do like the prize pumpkin one. And I know you can get it individually, even though you can't find maybe this particular one that has both books in it. I really like the one about the prize pumpkin because Papa Bear is trying to grow the biggest bear, the biggest pumpkin. And it's just kind of fun. So I like that one. Also, another one in the Living Lights series is Harvest Festival. Again, kind of this time of year, talking about pumpkins and being thankful for all that you have. And it's just a really good one to read leading up to Thanksgiving. And then this one's kind of a good one for early fall. I mean, obviously you could read it any time. But when I think about apples, I typically think about September, maybe early October. Um, but this one's a Pinkalicious one. It's not my favorite, but I do like it because it is all apple themed. So it's really cute if you are doing any type of apple study or you're going to an apple orchard or something. It's a really fun one. But I definitely love all of these Berenstain Barrier books. They're amazing. And we read them over and over and over every single year. Okay guys, these are our new family pets. They are snails that came from a company called Our Pet Snails. The girls had wanted a non-aquatic snail and believe it or not, surprisingly, they are not easy to find in town if at all possible. So we actually ordered these all the way from Greece, which I thought was really, really neat. It's a website where you can buy all different types of snails. You can even get little food, which is what's stuck on that little snail's face right there. 
you can get food for them to eat or they eat a lot of things you'd find around the house, little pieces of cereal and things like that. So really, really super low maintenance and they're exactly what the girls wanted. This is my youngest daughter's and his name is Hermie. And the really nice thing about it is it's a great starter pet. It's a great pet for people who live in apartments. And it is definitely unique. I don't know very many people who have pet snails and they have been so much fun. And it's been really neat to watch them because they came in that little jar that I showed you in the beginning and they're in kind of a dormant state and you have to wake them up. And then once you wake them up, they are very active, especially at night. And the girls have had a great time learning more about them, playing with them and just all kinds of fun stuff that they've done with them. So if you're looking for a pet for a child or anybody that would enjoy having one, they're very fun, surprisingly. And the good thing is our pet snails actually gave me a coupon code for 20% off and they have free worldwide shipping. So it might even be something you'd want to consider as a Christmas gift, but they have been lots of fun for our girls. And I'm just glad that it's not something that makes a mess. We already have a dog, a guinea pig and a bird. And the last thing I wanted was something that made a mess. And these certainly don't. So this is the daily to-do list that I made. Basically, I've been tweaking it over the last few weeks. Originally, I had all of the subjects in a box like this. And then I realized that a lot of the subjects, pretty much all of these, I never really assign a certain lesson or page number for. So there are things that she just does the next lesson. Um, you know, vocabulary, she knows to do the next page. Math, next lesson. Spelling, same thing all the way down. These things up here are things that I'll usually assign certain page numbers for. And I put clean desk in here um, just so that at the end of every day she's being reminded to straighten up her desk before she's done with school for the day. It's not really even lesson planning in my opinion because I'm not doing any of this stuff ahead of time. I'm literally filling it out as the day goes on as I'm doing school with her. So that's been working out really well. While we were gone, my husband took off the countertop, like I said, in the girls' bathroom. The cabinet is still fine. I painted it years ago. It was the same color as our kitchen cabinets used to be and our uh, master bathroom used to be. I repainted both of those years ago, but I'm gonna have to repaint them again. It needed to be repainted again anyway, um, but especially now with the different countertop, I wanna make sure it looks really bright and fresh because the countertop is white. Their bathroom is really small, so I wanted to make it as bright and airy in here as possible. Luckily, I think we got by pretty good as far as wall damage goes because I'm not a very good wall patcher and neither is my husband. So I was like, the, le the least amount of patching that we have to do, the better. So I've already started on this. I scraped off all of the other caulk that I could and some of the drywall paper that was ripped. And thank goodness the back looks really good. There was very, very minimal damage. This is really the worst of it. And the new countertop does not have a backsplash. So I have to make sure that I do a good job because this is gonna be just wall surface and so is this. There's like just a little tiny lip on the back of the new countertop. So that's what I'm doing right now is just, I got it all cleaned up, got the first layer of patch. I'm really, really hoping that I can get the wall repaired today so that he can still put the countertop on. Um, but he had to leave because um, his, boss at his job actually has COVID. So a couple of the people that have been in contact with his boss are going to get tested. My husband's getting tested today and we should find out in a few hours if he has it or not. Um, but even if he does, I mean, he doesn't feel bad and he really doesn't have any symptoms, no fever. So we're hoping that he doesn't, but even if he does, he will be able to still work on this at home and help me kind of put things together. So anyway, trying to get all the prep work done so that when he gets back home, we can put the countertop on. Painting the cabinet is gonna be a different day, obviously, that takes a long time. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. And I like to show you guys kind of home projects, even in homeschool day in the life videos, because if you're like me and you're a homeschool mom, it's there's so many other things you're doing at the same time. You're doing your daily cleaning, you're doing projects, you know, you're know, you taking care of other kids, you're going to appointments, you're running errands. So I do like to include this stuff in homeschool day, homeschool day videos just because I feel like that is a realistic homeschool day for me. It is juggling, helping the girls with their school and grading papers and teaching with cleaning and home projects and all the other stuff that moms have to do. So that's why I'm showing it in this video because it is just kind of part of my homeschool mom life. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Just wanna stop in, kind of let you know where we're at with that, kind of what's going on with my husband. So I'm gonna get back to work on this and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. I watch you as you 
try Do you know I'm looking And I can't help but smile Do you know how much I love you Okay, so a lot has happened since I talked to you guys last. My husband got back from his test and turns out he does have COVID. So it's kind of a whole mess because he was exposed to it pretty much early all like Monday, Tuesday and Thursday of last week because his boss is the one that had it. At least that's where we think it came from. Obviously you don't know for sure. Um, but we do know that his boss had it and had he had gotten sent home on Thursday because he came into work with a fever because they've been checking their temperatures and stuff every day. Well, I guess Thursday when, it, when his boss came in, he had a fever, so they sent him home. The receptionist at my husband's work also had it and she'd already been, I think, quarantined at that point. So, you know, it's a little unnerving because you always wonder, do I have it, do I not have it? So that's why he went ahead and got tested since he was exposed to it at work for sure. Um, and he does have it. So now we're in the dilemma of, we don't know if me and the girls have it. I honestly kind of think I do because the last few days, my chest has felt kind of uncomfortable and I've been able to breathe okay and I've been able to exercise and stuff and, and everything seemed fine. The reason though I think that is because obviously I've been around him and um, like the last few days it feels like my chest kind of feels like it does when you're a kid and you're running around outside or you're shoveling snow and it's really cold and your chest aches that's what my chest feels like and i didn't really think a whole lot of it until his boss came came up with covid and i was like oh i don't know maybe i do maybe i don't so here it is and we're trying to figure out like nobody has appointments today because obviously this is like last minute and I was like well does it not matter to anybody that my husband pest tested positive and all the people said no because the health department and the CDC assume if one person in your house has it that you all have it and so you're all supposed to quarantine which I'm okay with. I had things I needed to do this week and I had appointments in seven places I was supposed to go. Um, thank goodness we already voted. So that's taken care of. But if we don't have it, me and the girls, we could leave and go to my parents' house and leave my husband here so that if we don't already have it, then we won't be exposed to him. We probably already do. I mean, seriously, we live in the same house. We homeschool, we're all around each other. I mean, I've been kissing him. Like, it, we probably already have it. But obviously, I'm not gonna go to my parents' house if I, if I have it. So we made appointments for Wednesday to get tests, but then that's not a rapid test. So we're not gonna know anything probably by Friday. So in the meantime, if we didn't have it, we'd be exposed to him even more since he's gonna be home now because he can't go to work. So it's kind of a big old mess. So what I was able to get done today, even though I can't get an appointment for me or the girls today for testing, I was able to talk to a place that said, if I wanna come in and they will listen to my chest just to make sure that it's okay. And, and what they would do is basically give me an inhaler if they felt like I needed one. I'm gonna go and, and have them just like listen to my chest, but it's just kind of a mess. He really, my husband doesn't really have any symptoms. The only symptom he has is he said behind his nose kind of feels a little funny and he's had a headache the last few days. I have a headache almost every single day by the time nighttime comes. So to me having a headache every day, which I have had, um, doesn't really, mean anything because I almost always get a headache by the time the night is over. So, you know, that's the thing when you start looking at symptoms like, maybe I do have a runny nose. Well, I did cough the other day. You know, like you start analyzing every little thing, but just kind of let you guys know, update you, had no clue that this day in the life was gonna take this turn. Um, but that's how life is sometimes and I thought you guys would want to know. So anyway, I'm gonna go have them listen to my chest, just make sure everything sounds okay. And then other than that, we're gonna be here for the next 14 days. Okay, so I made it to the urgent care place and they were just gonna listen to my chest, but I was like, while I'm here, can you all just not go ahead and do my COVID test? And she's like, yeah, okay, we will. So I went in, they did the COVID test and she told me to wait in the car that it's only gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes to get the results back and she said if it's positive they'll call me back in there and let me like they'll listen to my chest if it's negative then I'm free to go back home and just quarantine with my husband and my kids so my kids are still going to be tested I'm sorry I've got a fuzzy on my lip my kids are still going to be tested um I'm actually I'm going to try to take them to a different place tomorrow that doesn't require an appointment but it's not a rapid test I'm like which one's better going tomorrow with no appointment but it's not a rapid test or waiting until Wednesday 
with an appointment, but it's a rapid test. Like I'm trying to figure out which one would get results quicker. I don't really know. It really wasn't that bad. It, I was afraid it was gonna hurt because I've heard so many things on the news about how deep they go and how hard they, you know, swab inside your nose. So I was a little nervous about that, but it actually, to me, was better than a strep test. I hate strep tests. They use like the same Q-tip thing. Um, but I hate strep tests because you ga I gag on the people every time whenever they do it. So I was really worried that they were gonna jam it up there really hard. Um, but it really didn't. It just tickled and then it made me have to like sneeze. Like when I came out of the car, I had to like sneeze and blow my nose. <laughs> but I don't, it doesn't hurt. So, you know, if you're wanting to get tested or needing to get tested, don't worry about that because it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I, I would be very surprised if I didn't have it. But even if I don't, I still can't go to my parents because I don't know if my girls have it or not yet. And we can't take a chance on taking it to them until we know for sure that the three of us don't have it. So anyway, it's kind of a waiting game. And it's funny because I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm happy if I had it, I'm not. I'm just gonna say that in a way, it's it would be kind of a relief just because you think every day, like you live your life and you don't have fear. You know, you do what you need to do. You take the precautions that you need to take and all that stuff. But you still kind of wonder, when's it my turn? Is it gonna get to me? Is it gonna get to my kids? Is it gonna get to my husband? You know, we're out and about. They're, the girls are doing activities at church. My husband's going to work every day. You know, we're going places. And as many precautions as you try to take, we all know that it's out there. There's a hair, I'm so sorry. Um, we all know that it's out there and um, as, unless you just stay at home 24 seven, then you know you're gonna be exposed to it at least at some point. Um, so it reminds me of on Twilight, Breaking Dawn part two, I think there's a vampire that's like disgusted with life. If there was an Eeyore vampire, it would be him. Like he's just super negative. And he, at the end when he finally gets destroyed, he's glad because he said, finally, not, this is totally, you guys hopefully are taking this the way I mean it. So I kind of feel like, I know I would not be happy if I had it. Um, but it would be at least like, okay, then this is like, what you've been thinking is going to happen and when's it going to happen is it going to happen it's happened so then you kind of can just deal with it as it comes versus wondering when it's going to come or if it's going to come does that make any sense i don't know maybe it's just me and my brain the way it works but that's what came to my mind when i thought if i have it that's kind of my mentality of at least i don't have to sit there and think like when am i going to get it or am i going to get it um, that kind of a thing. And then also I've heard, and I don't know, I'll have to do more research. I'll have to ask the doctor, but if you have it, that you're immune from it for a few months. So if that's the truth, then that would get us through the worst part of winter, um, that we wouldn't have to worry about my husband getting it or me getting it. And if the girls have COVID, they wouldn't have to worry about getting it for a few months. So that's at least a relief. I'm trying to look at the positives of it before I find out the results, just so I can kind of wrap my brain around it. If I do have it, kind of the positives that can come from this situation. So, still waiting. I'll check in back with you guys when I have an answer. Okay, so I just heard back and I don't, my, well, <laughs> my test was negative, which really surprises me because like I said, the way my chest has been feeling, I, I know they say you can get false negatives, but not a false positive. The ones that take three to five days or whatever are more accurate than the rapid tests. And that's what the one is on Wednesday. It's the, like the three to five day, not a rapid test. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really confused. I'm kind of at a loss because I was like 99% sure that I had it. I still don't know that I don't have it, but my, my test did come back negative today. So, I don't know. The only thing I know to do is he called me in. He's going to call me in an inhaler just to make sure that my lungs are really clear and, and all that stuff. I've never had an inhaler before, so I don't really know even how to use one, honestly. We've pretty much quarantined him in the bonus room. We I got an air mattress. We blew it up in there, so he's going to be sleeping in there, um, but we're going to try to keep him mostly contained upstairs. Um, and then the girls, except for bedtime, we're gonna try to keep them mostly contained downstairs. Just trying to figure all this out and process it. It's a lot to take in considering this morning I didn't even have a clue that any of us at all had it and it's turned into this. Um, so, uh, but I thought I would let you guys know, supposedly I don't have it. I still kind of don't believe it. Headed back to the house. 
Okay, I forgot to film an outro for this video. I got back home after getting my test and I will be honest, I was really overwhelmed because just trying to clean everything in the house, disinfect everything my husband had touched and get him situated and everything, it was just a lot, and especially, with, especially with the bathroom mess also going on at the same time. It was pretty overwhelming and I was not having the best day when I got home, but I wanted to say I hope you guys enjoy this video as odd as it was and it has been quite the conglomeration of things that went on um, home improvement and homeschool related stuff and fall books and COVID on top of that. It's definitely been an interesting turn of events and I appreciate you guys sticking with me to the end. Make sure if you like this video you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you head on out. I would appreciate any prayers that you want to send our way for my family and my husband. Uh, definitely appreciate that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.